All right, so the knee. <clears throat> Our routine is an AP, an oblique, and a lateral. We have space, special uh, weight bearing and then PA axial weight bearing, a Rosenberg method. So keep in mind that your oblique can also be, uh, mo most of the time is a medial oblique, but you can also do a lateral oblique just depending on uh, the location that you're at. Could be part of their routine. So your AP knee, your, you want to be able to visualize the articular facets, the eminence, the endocondylar fossa right here, and your eminences as, long, as well as the tibial plateaus. So as we talked about and as you saw in your book, your AP and oblique knees, central ray is parallel to the tibial plateau, so your tibial plateau right here, and that comes into the measurement at the ASIS. If it's 18 centimeters and below, it's a five degree caudad angle to that tibial plateau. So you can see that tibial plateau at that slight angle. If your ASIS from tabletop to ASIS is 19 to 24 centimeters, then your perpendicular as you see that um, tibial plateau is more perpendicular. And as the patient becomes larger, so 25 centimeters and above, then your angle becomes cephalid. And it's a five degree cephalid because you can see that tibial plateau now is, um, is changing angles. So caudad at a lower measurement, 19 to 24 perpendicular, and then five degrees for cephalid. So right here, thin thighs and buttocks is three to five degrees caught at, and usually just go to the five degrees. Usually a three degree is hard to maintain <clears throat> on your tube head. It's easier to get a five degree than a three degree, but know that it should be three to five. And this one here is also three to five, but most people just go to that five. <clears throat> so your AP knee, central ray is parallel to the tibial plateau. So you need to know it's, um, it is parallel to that tibial plateau and your central ray is a half inch distal to the apex of the patella. So your patella is here and you're not aiming at the patella, you're distal to that apex of the patella about a half inch. So rotate the leg internally three to five degrees for a true AP. So make sure that you're looking at those, feeling those um, condyles, rotate that leg in three to five degrees, and then that puts you in that true AP position or until the inter, uh, inter epicondylar line is parallel to the plane of the IR. This condyle and the opposite condyle are parallel to that image receptor. So your evaluation criteria, you want the femoral tibial joint space to be open. This femoral tibial joint space should be open. You want the knee joint centered to the collimated field. So the knee joint centered to the collimated field. You can see your patella right here. So your central ray is a half inch below the apex of that patella. So your articular facets are profiled which you're talking about right here, the articular facets <clears throat> are profiled, and then optimal exposure factors. So um, here is your lateral tibial plateau, your medial tibial plateau, your lateral condyle, your medial condyle, the patella, <clears throat> all of that should be seen and you're going to have superimposition of this tibia right there onto that fibia uh, in a true AP position. So AP knee, 25 centimeters at the ASIS to the tibial um, the tibial tuberosity measure or to the uh, tabletop sorry, to the tabletop measurement. Note the difference in joint spaces. So this is a five degree cephalic. So both of these pictures are 25 
uh, centimeters. This one has a five degree cephalic angle and this one is perpendicular. So you can see this joint space is very open and this one you're starting to see uh, your medial epicondyle is starting to close in that joint and the rest of your joint space is not open as well. So that's when it becomes important to know that you need that five degree angle for that AP knee to open that joint space and your central ray is a half inch below the apex of that patella okay so AP medial oblique is a 45 medial oblique rotation just like your lateral is going to be a lateral 45 degree rotation so your central ray is still distal to the apex of the patella so this leg is rotating in and you want it 45 degrees but you want your um, epicondyles here and this one down here to make that 45 degree um, angle. <clears throat> so you're going to rotate in and this is the one that I said you may need to put a pad under the hip here so that when they do rotate in it opens up that um, fibula tibular uh, joint space and we'll see that in that next image. So the evaluation criteria the proximal tibial fibular joint is open this joint right here needs to be open and that's with that 45 degree rotation in. You can see that your patella has moved over here medially and that's what should happen so open that joint space, move that patella medially, and rotate your, that leg 45 degrees. So lateral condyles are well demonstrated. Your lateral condyles are well demonstrated. Patella is superimposing the medial femoral condyle and then optimal exposure factors. So your AP lateral oblique, you're now rotating this leg this way 45 degrees. It's easier for a patient to rotate this way than it is to that medial. So 45 lateral rotation, still that half inch distal to the patella for that central ray. The evaluation criteria, the fibula is superimposed over the mid tibia. So you've got your fibula right here and it's in the mid tibia. Okay, Your patella is now lateral on that lateral condyle so the medial condyles are in profile medial condyle right here in profile the patella is superimposed over the lateral femoral condyle and then optimal exposure factors so this is what you would want for um, your lateral oblique knee so medial lateral <coughs> um, on this knee the lateral knee is a 5 to 7, always, always, always a 5 to 7 cephalid angle. Your central ray is 1 inch distal to the medial epicondyle. So your medial epicondyle right here and then your 1 inch distal is your central ray. Okay, You're going to flex the knee 20 to 30 for the lateral. So 20 to 30 on this flex of this knee. Okay. Right here you can see a nice 20 to 30 degree flex on that knee for that lateral. 5 to 7 degrees cephalid um, entering 1 inch medial, uh, 1 inch distal, distal to that medial epicondyle. Your evaluation criteria of that lateral knee, you want your femoral condyles superimposed. Both of them right here are superimposed. They're well superimposed. Your patella is in profile. Right here you can see that patella in profile. And then your patella femoral joint space is open and you can see this open joint space right here um, all the way through. Okay, And then optimal exposure factors. So a critique of a lateral knee. You can see that the condyles are not superimposed because I'm seeing a condyle here and then I'm seeing a condyle here. Okay. And more than likely this is that 
adductor turbicle that we're talking about right here. So your patellofemoral joint space is not open. So the way this is rotated, you can see your condyle, your lateral condyle right there. Okay, so it's closing that joint space. So this means that this patient is rotated towards the IR and they need to be rotated away from the IR so that knee needs to come up just a little bit. These condyles are not superimposed over one another which they need to be to open up those joint spaces. <clears throat> so AP and lateral knee. Uh, here is an AP knee and there's no central ray angle for the average patient. So make sure that you know those measurements once again so you know an average patient, um, a thin patient, and then a larger patient for your AP knees. And if you need that uh, 3 to 5 degree cephalid angle or 3 to 5 degree caudat angle. And then a horizontal central ray parallel to the epicondyles. And when you're doing a portable like this, you're going to use... Um, a horizontal zero degree, so zero angle onto that um, portable knee. So zero degree, if you are laid um, on your side and you're imaging at the table, then you're going to use a five to seven degree um, cephalid angle if you are doing it tabletop and the patient is rolled on their side. Otherwise, this one is horizontal, central ray, parallel to the epicondyles, zero degree. Your weight-bearing knees, usually they will do individual weight-bearing knees, so they'll do a right and a left. Um, it's, very, it's not very common to do both knees on one image, so keep that in mind as well. Your central ray is perpendicular, so there's no angle. Uh, you are going perpendicular to the knees, usually ordered as bilateral. Your femoral tibial joint spaces of the knees demonstrated for possible cartilage degeneration or other knee joint pathologies such as arthritis. Okay, So zero degrees, no angle, um, usually a right and then a left. Um, it's very seldom that you do right and left on one image. Just know what the protocol is at uh, the clinic site that you're located at. So evaluation criteria of your weight-bearing knees, you want your knee joint centered to the collimated field, so centered to the field. Um, no rotation of the knees, which also means when you're setting that patient up, most patients, the leg comes down, the, the feet kind of come out like this as the toes, so you want to make sure that when the leg comes down, you want those toes pointed forward, okay? So you may need to roll those feet in just a little bit, but make sure that your feet come in and out straight, not off to the side or turned in too much, okay? So make sure you have a straight line down and the toes are flat on the floor pointing straight out. Sometimes it's uh, difficult for patients to stand like that, but you do want them um, just like an AP knee on the table, straight line down and a slight five degree turn of the toes inward, okay, to make it a true AP. A PA axial weight bearing bilateral knee projection, so this is bilateral. Usually this is done, like I said, not two knees on one image, but usually it's um, a right knee and a left knee, two different images, but know um, what's done at your clinic site. This one is called the Rosenberg method, where their, their body is away, they're bent in. It's uh, usually at about a 45 degree angle that they're creating with their body. They're holding on to um, either straps or a towel, a sheet, something to help assist them hold, hold themselves there. So 45 degree flex on the knees. Central ray is 10 degrees caudal angle. <clears throat> so it is coming in 10 degrees caudad. 
to the midpoint between the knees at the level of a half inch below the apex of the patella. So once again, you need to know where that patella is, and then your central ray is a half inch below the apex of that patella. You want your knee joint spaces and intercondylar fossa to be demonstrated. So make sure that you set them up correctly. When you make that exposure, you're going to get everything that you need to see. So PA axial weight bearing method, we're at that 10 degree angle. They are creating a 45 degree angle right here. So it's not 45 with the, um, the wall stand. It is from here to here. So your tibia fibia running up and then a 45 degree angle from that 10 degree um, cephalid angle on that central ray. You're going to image those joint spaces open unless there's some kind of pathology going on which there looks like there is on this knee right here, the left one. So the right one is open, the left one is closed and that could be because of the pathology of the patient <clears throat> where during a weight bearing the joint spaces are closed <clears throat> and you could get bone rubbing on bone so that's why they um, do those a lot of times. So right here you've got weight bearing knees common for um, degenerative joint disease <clears throat> DJD degenerative joint disease you can see the joint spaces open here really, really well on both of these. This one, once again, you have a right knee with the joint space open and a left knee with the joint space closed. And you can see some pathology here, so there's probably some joint disease on that left knee. Note the um, obliterated lateral compartment of the left knee with associated joint space narrowing medially. So that's what they're talking about. And then joint space narrows medially. <clears throat> the intercondylar fossa, you've got a routine. It's usually a PA axial projection. You can either do the Cap Coventry method or the Holmblad method. And then a special is an AP axial. So it's the tunnel view, intercondylar fossa, on an 8 by 10 lengthwise. So you can see the bend in the knee and then their central ray is angled just slightly at that uh, intercondylar fossa. So you're flexing 40 to 50 degrees on that, on that leg, so whatever your patient can handle. And then central ray is perpendicular to the lower leg. So perpendicular to the lower leg, which means that this is going to create basically a 90 degree angle here. So perpendicular to that lower leg, CR centered to the popliteal crease. So in the back of the leg there, that crease is your popliteal crease. That's where you want it to uh, be centered at and then perpendicular to that lower leg. Your evaluation criteria of the PA axial projection, the tunnel view. You want to see your intercondylar fossa in profile, so you want to see that intercondylar fossa. No rotation, so you want this. Um, the best way to tell rotation is of the um, patella right there in the center of the femur. Articular facets and intercondylar emin eminences are well viewed, so your intercondylar facets right there and then your eminences are well viewed right there and then optimal exposure factors of course and you want slight superimposition of your tibia and your fibia so the Holmblad method the intercondylar fossa you are <clears throat> leaning forward um, about 20 to 30 degrees so from from 90 you're going 20 to 30 degrees, which puts your uh, knee in a 60 to 70, knee, 70 degree flexion on your knee. So this and this create a 60 to 70 degree flexion on your knee. Central ray is perpendicular to the image receptor, so there's no angle on it. It is zero degree perpendicular, and then it's centered at that popliteal crease right there. 
and you uh, make your exposure and you'll see that intercondylar faucet. <clears throat> a chair and a wheelchair partially standing the Holmblad method variations so instead of being on the table with both knees you're on you're on a chair or a wheelchair with just one knee and then the same thing you're gonna lean forward slightly um, about 20 to 30 degrees and then hold that position which results in that 60 to 70 degree um, knee flexion right there so this is gonna create 60 to 70 degrees and you, the patient is leaned forward, um, so they slightly and slowly lean forward about 20 or 30 degrees to create the 60 to 70 degree flexion. Your AP, the Beclair method of the intercondylar fossa, you're going to flex your knee 40 to 45 degrees, so this knee creates 40 to 45. And then your CR is centered a half inch distal to the apex of the patella. So once again, find the patella about a half inch distal to the apex of it. And then your central ray is perpendicular to the lower leg. So the lower leg perpendicular here, your central ray should come in uh, perpendicular to that lower leg. Or sorry, here's your lower leg here. And this will create, should create a really good 90 degrees to that lower leg. So <clears throat> make sure that whatever your lower leg is, that when your central ray comes down, you can almost see a 90 degree uh, perpendicular angle for that lower leg, um, half inch distal to the apex of the patella. So apex of the patella, um, CR to a half inch distal to the apex of the patella. <clears throat> Just another drawing right here. So what they're saying is you've got the bones in the lower leg, your central ray comes down, this is a 90 degree right here. Your femur, when your femur comes out, that creates a 40 to 45 degree angle from your femur to your lower leg. So that's when you know that you're um, set up perfectly for that Beclair method, the intercondylar fossa. You're going to image on an 8 by 10. So notice that your central ray comes down. It's not necessarily going to come down in the center of your image receptor. It's a little bit high. So it's about the upper middle um, of that image receptor, but it's still going to image that, um, that intercondylar fossa onto that image plate. So your AP axial Beclair method, there's your intercondylar fossa, you have your articular surfaces, and then you have your eminences right here. So AP axial, this is a 40 degree flexion and um, a CR angle to match and create that 90 degree or um, perpendicular to your lower leg. So patella and patella femoral joint spaces. So routine is going to be a PA of your patella a lateral of your patella, and then a tangential of your patella. And a lot of times um, when you're doing patella, you're, the, the routine, they throw out the PA, um, and you end up doing just a lateral and then a tangential. But uh, just keep in mind, it, it can change depending on what clinical site you're at. So unilateral on an 8x10, this is a bilateral on a um, 14 by 17 so they're imaging both of them this is usually not done anymore with digital we do um, individual images so you're going to do a right and then a left patella and usually not two on one so your central ray is perpendicular to the mid patella area the popliteal crease so popliteal crease you're doing a PA because it gets that patella 
closer to the image receptor. So that patella is going to be here. It's going to reduce magnification, a true PA, align the inner epicondylar line parallel to the plane of the IR. Usually requires that five degree internal rotation of the anterior knee. So just like when you're doing your AP knee and you need to rotate your leg in about five degrees to get a true AP, you still have to rotate the leg about five degrees to get a true PA and then you are parallel to the popliteal crease of the leg. So <clears throat> your evaluation criteria, your patella is centered to the collimated field. There's no rotation, so it's centered to the field here. There's no rotation, and you're getting the optimal exposure factors, and you can see that PA <clears throat> patella. So our medial lateral patella, central ray is perpendicular to the med, mid femoral patella joint. You're flexing 5 to 10 degrees, so you need a little bit of flexion, but not a lot, not like a lateral knee. So keep in mind for your patella, it's only 5 to 10 degrees. Your femoral epicondyles are directly superimposed, so you're setting it up just like a lateral knee without the um, 20 to 30 degree flexion. This one's only 5 to 10 degrees flexion. And then superimposed and plane of patella is perpendicular to the plane of the IR. So your patella comes out and you can, you're going to be able to visualize that um, lateral patella. So just like this, you're seeing the joint space open. You're seeing your patella um, in profile. Your knee is a really good lateral knee. Your patella joint and knee joint are centered to the collimated field, which they are. And then your patella is in a true lateral. The merchant bilateral method, bilateral tangential. So these are two on one. Like I said, they're usually not done anymore, but um, sometimes they are. Um, so you're going to flex 40 degrees on your knees. So here to here is 40 degrees. Your central ray is angled caudad 30 degrees. So 30 degrees caudad, you're skimming that body part. So it's a tangential. And then you're directing the CR to a point midway between both patella to image them. And you can see the shadow right here of the, the top of the knee and what will be the image of the patella. Adjustable leg support and IR holder for the merchant board. Some places have these, others don't. Um, just know what you have available to you depending on where you are for clinic and how a patella is going to be imaged. Uh, patella is one of your um, electives that will um, that doesn't come along very often and you're going to want to try to comp on it um, when it comes in. So your evaluation criteria, your tangential patella, the merchant method, you can see the left and the right. Um, they almost clipped this one off here. Everything is there, but it got really close. So your intercondylar sulcus and your patella are visualized. The intercondylar sulcus right there. The patella is visualized. The femoral patellar joint space is open. Really good exposure factors. You're seeing the, um, the shades of gray that create the image. This knee could have been brought this way just a little bit. And then it would have looked more like this with the really nice open patella femoral joint, femoral patellar joint. Your inferior superior projection, so <clears throat> the patient is holding this image receptor. You are coming at this angle here, um, usually a uh, 10 to 15 degree angle from the lower legs, imaging that patella up here into the, uh, into the image receptor. The patient's going to hold it. Um, you need this image receptor um, upright. So a 40 to 45 degree flexion of the knees, your central ray is inferior superior, 10 to 15 degrees from your lower legs. You can do bilaterals um, 14 by 17 on the tabletop or unilateral 8 by 10. So this is bilateral, they did a 14 by 17. Usually it's one and then the other on um, an 8 by 10 collimated field. 
The Houston method, the knee is flexed 40 degrees. Your central ray is 15 to 20 degrees to the lower leg. So right here, 15 to 20 degrees. You're pulling that leg up out of the way just to get it out of that light field. You're skimming that body part right there. You're creating a, a tangential, so it's the Houston method, a tangential patella directed central ray to the mid femoral patellar joint, and you'll image that uh, patella. So the set gas method is a prone method. This one is 90 degree flexion. So uh, Houston is uh, 40, set gas is 90. Your central ray is 15 to 20 degrees from the lower leg. The other one was 15 to 20 degrees from the lower leg as well. The set gas seated variation, which is a sunrise or a skyline, and most uh, texts will talk the sunrise view. So the sunrise view is the set gas seated variation. Careful of radiation protection. You want to make sure that your drape is appropriately over the gonads and then a lot of times tucked um, down into um, the thigh gap here. So sunrise and you're still skimming. You can see the nice knee right there and you're going to image that patella right there into that image receptor. The patient is part of it so they're holding on to the image receptor on both sides and then you're angling skimming that joint, skimming that patella, tangential image. So the set gas overflexion of knee draws patella into the intercondylar sulcus. So make sure that you're not flexed too much because otherwise you're going to draw that patella into that joint space and you're going to close it up. So make sure that you're flexed just enough, you're not over flexed, and uh, you'll create that open joint space. So your Hobbs modification, superior inferior sitting. So you can see that the patient is sitting. The cassette is underneath them. You've got some magnification going on here. Knees are flexed slightly. IR is placed on the footstool to reduce OID. So it's not on the floor. It's on the footstool and raised up as much as possible. You're directing the central ray to the mid femoral patellar joint. So mid patellar femoral joint. They're imaging both of them. And you can see the knees right there. You're going to get that um, femoral patellar joint. And this is the Hobbs modification with the knees bent at the end of the table. And you can see the open joint space really well on the knees. And the collimated field includes both knees, all the soft tissue, both markers, right and left. So this is just a summary of the tangential projections for the patella. Gives you the information you need for the inferior superior projection. The patient supine, which is 45 knee flexion. The Houston method, patient prone, 55 degree knee flexion. Set gas, which is the patient prone or seated with a 90 degree knee flexion, and then the Hobbs modification, superior inferior tangential method, patient sitting um, 90 degree or greater than 90 degree knee flexion. Um, keep in mind that um, the more you flex that knee, the more it's going to pull that uh, patella down into that uh, patella femoral joint space. So make sure that you go back over all four of these so you understand them how you set them up, what the flexion is, what the angle is, and we will come back with the end of this uh, PowerPoint and then we'll continue on to the pelvis.